Antichrist, the identity of the man of sin. Okay. So it's a really very important thing because it's connected to Mystery Babylon, as in the great whore of Revelation. So when you identify the great whore, guess what? The great whore rides the scarlet beast. And the scarlet beast rules over the ten horns, ten kings. So basically what we're talking about is two things. We're talking about a world government ruled by Antichrist who comes from the great whore. That's why there's so many agents out there saying it's Islam or it's, you know, it's Zionism or Jerusalem is Babylon, you know. There's just so many agents out there because the Jesuits know that if you identify according to scripture, right, the great whore, and yes. the judgment of the great whore, it proves that the scarlet base comes from her. Now, if the Vatican, if the papacy is in fact the great whore, then it proves that the Pope is Antichrist. Very clearly. And now he's only called the Scarlet Beast. In one verse in the whole Bible, he's called the Scarlet Beast. And the Scarlet is the color of the Cardinals of Rome. Absolutely. You know, Did you... It's right there in the Word of God. But if you can create so much misinformation or disinformation about Mystery Babylon, then people, that's why there's, there's, there's... Anyway, I'll let you talk. But yeah, that, that's really burning in my spirit right now. I mean, i just done a video on that today on YouTube. And uh, I've tried so many times to move away from this ministry, move away, and I'll tell you what, regardless of the price that will be paid, the Holy Spirit keeps bringing me back, back, back to Amen. this revelation of the Scarlet Beast. Amen. I can believe that. We have Brother Alan Lamont uh, with us here on Skype. Uh, we have some future plans together that we're going to do uh, that we that I know will be a blessing for you guys. And uh, and if you don't know Brother Alan's channel, we tried it. We have it. It's actually, if you go to our own YouTube channel, you can find his channel right there. He, Brother Alan is the only one that we actually sponsor as well. It's Prophetic Revelation. He's on YouTube there. Definitely listen to what Brother Alan says. And I don't say it for plugging things. I hate that. But uh, but the thing is, I know that he's a man of God. He speaks the truth. Uh, Brother Alan, he deals a lot with the Vatican, uh, the you know, the Antichrist, exposing the true Antichrist uh, of today. And, uh, and Brother Alan really gets into some very fundamental teachings as well, as far as being born again, salvation, things like that. And so I think it's important that... Uh, that you, you listen, listen intently, because he's got more knowledge than I do when it comes to um, the Freemasons, how those things work together. And I just it's a privilege for me to be able to, to speak with him and, and for us to share things together here with you. And Brother Allen, one of the things, too, um, that I think about when we think about the Antichrist, when I was reading, I've been working through, the, uh, through uh, Matthew's Hebrew Gospel, and I'd always heard that the word uh, Antichrist or Antichristos is only used by John in, in his writings there. And, uh, and Nahami Gordon, I know him uh, more of an acquaintance, not personally, but we, we know one another. And uh, he was the one that really got my interest in the Hebrew Matthew. And so I finally got the book by George Howard, because some people ask me where that come from. Uh, he actually recommended that as being an accurate Hebraic tra uh, translation. Uh, I don't go by George Howard's translation. Somewhat I can, but I prefer to read it in the Hebrew itself. But when I was reading, when, when you get into the Gospel of Matthew, uh, he literally used the word antichristos. And he actually used the Greek term, which also shows me that Aramaic was not the main language uh, spoken back then. What's your thought on that one? Where, where is it wow. at? <laughs> I don't have it with me. Oh gosh, my wife probably stole it from me. So, but uh, but yeah, I well, mean, Aramaic, Aramaic was spoken at that time. Oh, I believe yeah. it was spoken as well. Um, yeah, you know, because we had the languages that were there. What was interesting though is that when he wrote in Hebrew. When there's certain words as he's writing there, he's placing the emphasis on a Greek term as well. Uh, so w he'll say something, and then you can tell it's a word that is not normal in Hebrew, so then he also transliterates it uh, in the Hebrew language, but uses the Greek terminology for it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, nonetheless... As we both know, the Pope of Rome is definitely the Antichrist. We also know that, uh, it's, as, as Paul said, the spirit of Antichrist is already working. And once they started that papal succession, it just kept going right on down all the way through. 
But what really blew me away, though, Alan, was recently is I've had so many people ask me, how do you know that Edom and Rome are one and the same? Well, God revealed it to me is how I got that. But then as I began to biblically really look at it, I started, the next thing I know, I was able to prove it from Scripture that modern-day Rome is Edom. And, and that's something that blew me away as well when you can see it in the Scripture. Uh, I'd like, I don't want to do all the talking, though, because I know you got a lot of things to share, and I, that's what I want to do. I want people to hear the thoughts that you have on these things. Okay, well, according to Revelation 17, as I was saying before, you have the great horde of the rise of the beast. The most important thing in that chapter is to understand the identity of the great whore, because she rides the beast. The beast controls the ten horns, the ten kings, and they give their power unto the beast. And... Two things are happening today. We see the Ten Kings, we see the world government giving the power onto the Pope. There's never been a Pope like this in history. There's never been a Jesuit Pope. There's never been a Black Pope that's become the White Pope. And I don't want to lose anyone that's watching this uh, video or listening to this message, but for years the Black Pope, the Jesuit Superior General, he's always been the man behind the throne. He's always had the power over the bishops of Rome. He's always had the power over the Pope. But what's happened is, through history, initially, the Jesuits were controlled by the papacy. So the great whore was riding the beast. But what happened was, the black pope took full power over the papacy through infiltration. And what happened was, all the bishops, all the cardinals, they are now under the power of what's called Jesuit provincials, they're under the power of the black papacy. So when you're looking at Pope Francis, Bagaglio, you're looking at a man who was the Jesuit general. And so, just to clarify what I'm saying and bring a conclusion, you have the scarlet beast rising right now. He's rising. And the Bible does talk about the mystery of iniquity that does already work. The religion of the papacy is Babylonian. It's the same as the Roman Empire. That's right. It's the same as the Greek Empire. It's the same as the Egyptian Empire. It goes all the way back to Nimrod. It's Babel. All you have to do is look at Europe, look at Strasbourg, look at the European Parliament. What does it look like to you? It looks like the Pain of Brugel, the Unfinished Tower. They're building a Babylonian world government, world religion, and the Pope is the head of it all. That's why they all go there. The Muslims go, the Sikhs, the Hindus go, they all go. That's why Obama goes, that's why Biden goes, that's why Merkel goes. They all go to the Pope because the Pope is the universal monarch of the world. It, it, People say he's a false prophet, but he will be the Antichrist. Final statement. No one on this planet has the power that the Vatican has. No one. You're it owns right. the bank system, it owns the military, it owns intelligence, it owns everything. That's exactly right, brother. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking about, um, I was trying to remember which scripture it was that I had there. Because we there was one in... Oh, gosh, where was it, Brother Alan? You may even remember this one here where the Scripture talks about he goes in and he goes out. Are they? He said they will no more go in and out from her, and that made me think of the dignitaries of the world. Even the Iranians send their representative to the Vatican. And in the last two papacies, with Pope Benedict and then with Pope Francis, one of the things that I saw that was very interesting is that uh, under Pope Benedict, all of the American church leaders... Uh, maybe not every single one of them, but most of the organizations, and I have a video of that. Uh, it's easy to get on YouTube. All the people have to do is search for it there. But they go there, and they're coming up, and they're giving their allegiance to the Pope. Now, one yeah. thing that people don't realize is that in order for you to have an audience with the Pope, you have to dress a certain way. You have to dress in black. Uh, you have to, you know, there's, even if they don't see it on camera, they're, they're going in there, they're going to bow, they're going to kiss his ring. Uh, yeah, gosh, I'll tell you what, Brother Allen, and, 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 uh, no, by the actually, way, guys. It was, it was an ecumenical prayer service in New York, and Cardinal Edward Egan, who was the previous Archbishop of New York, he was presiding over it. And what you had is Pentecostals, you had Baptists, you had Methodists, and they all came and you, let me tell you right now, you know what they all did? What? They all gave the Pope a Masonic grip, a Masonic handshake, a Master Mason grip. And you see Obama doing it and he tries to hide it. You see Biden doing it. I'm telling you now, you see Herman von Rompuy, the President of the European Union, and every single one of these people, they all give the Pope the Master Mason grip. The Masons. 
Oh my god. Republican gosh. Knights. All right, now here's a question. What is your thought on the leadership of Israel in all of this? Because the one thing that is, I mean, Shimon Perez to me is a son of Ahab. He's a traitor to begin with. Uh, I am concerned about Netanyahu because he went there to begin with. I see him trying to back out when Shimon Perez goes over there for this quote-unquote prayer meeting, which we know really had nothing to do with a prayer meeting. That was just a, yeah. uh, a, a, a front, uh, I guess you could say. I would like to know what your thought is on that, because the only way they could get a control of, of Jerusalem is because the, 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 you know, the government is allowing it. And, and so it really concerns me. Uh, and there's some things i got to tell you about on that as well. Go ahead, brother. Right, well, we'll have to go back quite a few years here. Shimon Perez was trained by the Jesuits in Poland. He's Jesuit trained. Yes. And when you look at Netanyahu, he's connected to the Council on Foreign Relations. You know, what we have to understand, Stephen, right, is that although there is the appearance of independence and national sovereignty, right, the truth is this, all of these leaders, like Putin, like Merkel, like, you know, uh, Shimon Peres, all of these leaders, all they are are people who are given power by the Vatican, okay? And so they're all working together. That's what the G8, the G20, that's what it all is. And let me tell you what the G means right now. You know the G, you know what the G means? It stands for the Church of the Jesuit. It's the government wow. of the Vatican, the Black Pope. That's what it is. It's the Jesuit 20. It's a world government where you have every single leader. You know what I found? And I found it by accident. It was about eight months ago. I was looking at 10 Downing Street in a, a news conference, you know. Uh, some of the reporters stand outside 10 Downing Street. And that's the official residence of the Prime Minister. You know what I saw above the door? A sunburst. And it had the Jesuit spikes right above it. Right in oh plain sight. Oh my gosh. With an arrow pointing up to it. There was a Jesuit sunburst above 10 Downing Street. I'm telling you, it is a Jesuit world government. And all of these leaders today are Jesuit trained and they're put in power by the Vatican. Shimon Peres is another court Jew serving the Pope of Rome. He's serving the Pope. And he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II into the Order of St. Michael and St. George. He was knighted into the Order of the British Empire, the Order of the Bath. That man is a very powerful Freemason. My and he's a nice Templar Mason. Well, he was knighted by the Queen, and the reason why is because of what he'd done in the Oslo Accords. He signed over 60% of the old city of Jerusalem to yes. the Pope. Yes. That's what that man done. So when people talk about Israel and they talk about the Pope and Pope Francis, and, you know, they're going to take over, it's already been done. It's it been has, signed, right. it's been sealed, it's been done. And, you know, you're right, Brother Allen, because when, when we were, when me and my wife were, um, were in Jerusalem uh, a few months back, we're standing there and, 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 they're, and they're saying right there that uh, in, in the Temple Institute, when they do the tour, it's like they're grooming the people to get them ready to know that we have no sovereignty over uh, Jerusalem. Because they, they flat out say it on there. They said, we, we have no uh, sovereignty. So... You know, the, the thing is, brother, truth is truth. When It, it doesn't matter if it's uh, Netanyahu or anybody else. If you, it's, it's just, I think that the, here's what I look at when I, when I think about Israel. I know that we have a Zionism that the Vatican did to start with that caused the creation of this state. But yet, nonetheless, and here's what's obvious. You know that it's so. Mickey Bielski, very good friend of mine, and... Uh, he is the son, uh, the, the eldest son of Tuvia Bielski that the movie Defiance was made after. And, uh, and he tells me the story about when his father was there in Israel. Of course, Mickey was born in Israel. He said they're, they're getting ready to do the War of Independence. And they ask his father, because he is a war hero from, from uh, during the Holocaust, you know, fighting the Germans. You know, would you, they wanted him to fight for them, but they also wanted certain families to gain power in Jerusalem. And he was commanded to kill anyone that tried to pass the line. Jew or not, he was commanded to kill him. And of course, Tuvia refused to do it. And God bless him for that, because he said, I spent the last six years of my life saving Jews, Jews, Jewish lives, and now you're telling me to kill my own people? He said, there's no way, I'll have no part of it. And which to me was the best evidence that I ever saw that indeed 
there was a political agenda. And of course, now that I know the things that I know as well, because you wouldn't believe, Brother Allen, how many years I watched your videos. Every so often, my wife would come to me. She said, you got to listen to this guy. You guys talk a lot alike. The only difference is, is the rapture. You all have two different, two different thoughts on the rapture. So, <laughs> well, used to have two different thoughts on the rapture. But anyway, so it was, you know, and I would just really enjoy listening because I would learn so much and... It was things I already believed, but I didn't have the knowledge that God has gifted you with. But seeing this with the Bielski family and what he, Mickey had shared with me that happened to his father, I knew there was agenda. And then as well, we see the British would only allow 2,000 new immigrants a year. And that's because they were bringing in the families they wanted there to create the state they wanted. But by the grace of God, God also has his own plan. And that's what makes me think of Ezekiel 35, where God says that they would say these two nations will be ours. And I really believe that that was the Vatican intentionally trying to make two states in Israel. They're going to try to take them both. And, and then God makes the, the little distinction. He says, but you didn't know that I was there. And you have no idea what my plans are. So we got some of the true religious Jews in there. And once we got those in there, then it became a struggle for power inside of Israel. And so although the Vatican, they tried to bring it in through diplomatic me means to make it look like that's the way it's going to be. But there's been a struggle now because there's some true Jews there as well. Yeah. Can I share something about the foundation of Israel and, and bring it up to what's happening right now? Because all of these wars are getting closer to Israel. Yes. We see, you know, we see, uh, you know, Afghanistan, we see Iraq, we see Syria. It's right near the border of Israel. And, okay, let me just go back in time here. When it comes to the British Empire, you have the Rothschilds. They funded the settlements. Yes. Now, the Rothschilds, people, you know, when you talk about the NWO or the Illuminati or the New World Order, people bring up the Rothschilds, you know. People love to do that. And they make them out to be this all-powerful bloodline. They said that, you know, the top of the New World Order. But in fact, the Rothschilds are Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, the Knights of Malta, <laughs> and the Knights of the British Empire. That's as high as they go in the power structure. That's as high as they go. They're just Knights of Rome. My and, you know, with the Rothschilds, if you look at the Israeli court, that was designed by the Rothschilds. And if you look at the pyramid, and you see the all-seeing eye right at the top of it, you know, it's just... <laughs> So they're the not. They're, they're, uh, let me ask you this, then, brother. So that means that they're not really Jewish. Is that what we're seeing as far as that, or they're Jewish but they're just Freemasons? I think they're Jewish. I mean, people people always throw out that scripture. They say they're Jews, not for the synagogue of Satan, and people use that a lot to bash the Jews online. They do it all the time. Yeah, I know. But the fact is, I think the I think the Rothschilds are Jewish, but obviously, you know what the word Rothschild means in German? It means red shield. Oh, the really? red shield of the Knights of Malta. That's oh right. Gosh. The word Rothschild, it means red shield. That's what the name means. And if you look at the Knights of Malta, him, uh, uh, Amish Mayor Rothschild, he was the, one of the founders, and uh, he actually named them Rothschilds, which is, if you look at the shield of the Knights of Malta, the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, it's a red shield with a white cross. Right, so they've right. always been knights of Malta. They've always been knights of Rome, always. You know? My and they goodness. do have power in the banking system. Uh, you know, they do. They're, and you know what? They're also the guardians of the Vatican treasury. That's one of the titles. They don't own the papal treasury. They're just guardians. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? They definitely don't own it, but they are the guardians. And as I've seen some people say, yeah. they say the Jews, they put the Jews in power uh, to be the fall guys so that when something goes bad, I think it's Eric Phelps that actually makes that, makes that statement there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My issue, though, with Eric, though, is, he, he, you know, I don't like the racism part in there. You know, I realize that uh, the Jewish people are people called of God, but uh, I don't know him, though, or anything like that. But w one of the things, though, brother, that you talk about the wars, too, that are going on around Israel right now. Yeah. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? Okay. Well, it's all just chaos. You know? It's all just chaos. What they're doing is they're overthrowing the Muslim nations. Because what they're going to do is they're going to sign a covenant with Israel and the world government. But instead of it being with the United Nations, it will be at Israel. You imagine the leaders of the world coming and the Pope of Rome signing a peace. Who can bring everyone to the table? Who has the power? 
That's right. Exactly. Only, only the Pope. peace. But the thing is, the United Nations will be involved. That was said by Herbert Walker Bush in his 1991 uh, broadcast on the New World Order. He talked about there's a real chance of this New World Order. And he talked about the vision of the UN's founders. So the UN will actually, you know, enforce the peace. It will be enforced. There'll be a, a very strong military presence in Israel. You know? And that's what Shimon and Peres stop. said that he would do. He would bring a United Nations force yeah. in. Now, do you think then, Brother Alan, do you think that what's happening now, the unrest with the Muslim world around there, is, my thought is, has been incited by the Vatican uh, through whatever channels that they're using to incite that violence. I mean, we have the evidence yeah. that America trained ISIS, etc. It seems like to me that they're going to allow Hezbollah, ISIS, whatever, through Syria spill over into Israel only to use that to maybe make the Jewish people bow under pressure and then, of course, the Pope looking like a savior to, to, to bring this to an end and bring a United Nations force in to enforce okay. it. Well, to answer that question, we need to look a lot further than where we are now, Stephen. What we need to understand is the end game. Ultimately... All this agitation from the PLO or Hamas or Hezbollah, ultimately they're going to try and destroy Israel. The Bible, Jesus Christ said it very clearly that they will come in and they will attack the city. This is the ultimate plan, but before that they'll make a covenant of death. They'll make an agreement with the papacy right. and with the world government for seven years. And that will be three and a half years of peace. But ultimately they want the Muslim world to annihilate Israel. And only the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, with the armies of heaven, will the Lord of hosts destroy Antichrist. Right. The Lord himself is the only hope of Israel. It's the Amen. only hope. Amen. And that's that's evident as well, because even with the two witnesses, when they do come, and we know as, as well, Moses and Elijah, when they actually come, three and a half years, they'll bring plagues down on the world, the world will hate them. But obviously, the, the still the beast, the Antichrist, or the beast will overcome them. They're killed. So even with the great miracles that God will do there, it still doesn't work. Like you said, it will take... Christ himself to come on the scene to bring this to an end with the armies of heaven. Uh, and I'll tell you where the, where the great men of the earth will be. They'll be in the underground cities. That's where they'll be. They'll be in the underground bases, military bases, that are built all across the United States underground. And they will say to the rocks, cover us for the wrath of the Lamb has come. But I'll tell you what, they will see the day of wrath, and they'll be brought under the wrath of God. Vengeance will come. Amen. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and I will repair. And he will repair. My will. goodness, my goodness. You know, um, another thing too, Brother Allen, is that uh, um, I use this to, I have to re-record every little section here so it comes out good too. Uh, but it... At the stage that we're at right now, another thing I'd be curious to know your thoughts on is Gog and Magog. I hear a lot of people ask me about these different wars here, Gog and Magog, Armageddon, and uh, I know I've never asked you personally about that. Do you believe they're one and the same? They're two different wars. Uh, I'm not... I've kind of thought that maybe Gog and Magog is something that happens right here at the beginning of the seven years, and then that piece comes in. I'm not absolute on that. I'd like to know what your thought is on it. Well, there's two references to Gog and Magog. One's Ezekiel 36, 37, 38. And then you have Revelation 21, where it uh, talks about the invasion once again. It says that Satan will be loosed, and he will go to Gog and Magog, which is the sign of the sea. So, right. uh, like you, I believe that during the tribulation, right, when you look at Gog and Magog, it has to be during the tribulation, because... You have Ethiopia, you have Libya, you have, you have all of these Muslim nations that are aligned with Israel. Now, Russia today, nearly every Bible theologian says this, Russia, I agree with it. Now, if you, if you look at Russia, I'll, I'll tell you what people don't talk about. You have the Mediterranean Union, you have the European Union, but under the radar you have what's called the Eurasian Union. And what Putin has done is he's united all of the Muslim nations now, in the book of Ezekiel 36, when God speaks to Gog, he makes a prophetic decree over him, and he says, Be thou a guard for him. And the same way that America's been a guard for Israel, Russia is going to be a guard for the Islamic nations. And it is because of the power of Russia that the United Nations will not be able to stop this invasion. Now, I personally believe that the invasion of Gog and Magog will happen 
midway, you know, through the tribulation. When that attack on Israel, it will come from Islam, but it will be by the power of Russia and the Eurasian Union. That makes sense. But there's a lot that's going on, there's a lot that's going on there. It makes sense. In and that time, Go on, sorry. One of the other things that, that kind of maybe coincides with that is because the Gog and Magog war, unlike Armageddon, the Gog and Magog war, God is also dealing with punishment to the nations for what they have done to Israel. And more specifically, it seems to be the house of Israel, not just uh, uh, the, the house of Judah. And that is a lot where you're dealing with the, when you're dealing with the Arabic nations that are around there because it was Syria that conquered the house of Israel and they go into captivity at that point there. So it, it makes more sense biblically that it would be these nations along with Russia pushing down on there uh, or heading that. And here's what's really weird, Brother Allen. Israel right now thinks that Russia is their ally in what's going on. Uh, that's I know that from inside information they believe that russia has uh, russia has come on board agreed to work with them uh, and whereas they know that the united states is aiding their enemies and uh so but it's funny they they all think this but but israel has no idea this is they're just being played yeah yeah i absolutely agree i absolutely agree with you and, and the other thing is it's funny i mean israel right now the, the officials of Israel are more concerned about Turkey is really where their fear is right now. They're fearing Turkey, what t Turkey is doing. They believe that Turkey is an alliance not, uh, with, with other nations as well that are, that are causing the Muslim uprise in, uh, with Hezbollah, with ISIS and all the other ones there. And uh, according to what they're saying now, that Russia has their back. Uh, that Russia is wants them to come in, and Russia is going to destroy them. Only to only to find out a few years from now, Russia's Russia's only setting up the stage for themselves. Uh -huh. And then God is going to take and change the whole program altogether, though. Well, if you look at Putin, I mean the ex KGB. You know, I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> the man is clearly under the power of the Pope. <laughs> He's under the power of the Black Pope, to be honest. I, I, I remember researching uh, Vladimir Putin. And there was a photograph on one of my videos before I took some of them down. And uh, you have Juncan Carlos of Spain, right? Now let me just say something here, right? Because it's important. Sure. And I'll say something after that. I've got two things I want to say. The first thing is this. King Juncan Carlos of Spain, right? The King of Spain is a knight of the equestrian order. Now understand that this world government is ruled by Vatican knights. Once you understand that, it's become easy to understand. Now, the King of Spain is a knight of the equestrian order, he's a knight templar, he's order of the garter, okay? My he's a member of the order of the garter from Britain. He's also a member of the Knights of Malta. This is the most powerful knight of the royal bloodlines. He's also a member of the order of the golden fleece. Now bear with me, I'm going to connect some dots for you here. Okay. He's, he's also the, he's, right, he's the head of the order of the golden fleece. Now, the order of the golden fleece governs Europe. Nicholas Sarkozy, right, the previous French president was knighted into the Order of the Golden Fleece by King Jun Carlos of Spain. And I have a photograph where you had uh, Jun Jun Carlos of Spain sitting with Vladimir Putin before he was even in power. My goodness. You have, you have Jun Jun Carlos of Spain in the White House giving Jesuit, you know, signals to Obama and, you know, Hillary Clinton. But Hillary Clinton graduated from Jesuit Holy Cross. Her husband graduated from Jesuit Georgetown University. Now let me talk about King Abdullah the Second of Jordan. Now this will really blow your mind, okay? You really will, brother, really will. Right. And this happened through a dream. One night the Holy Spirit gave me a dream, and the dream was I was at a cash point, and all his money was coming out of this ATM, right? <laughs> and I looked at the credit card, and it says King Abdullah, right? And then the next day, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm on the internet, and I suddenly see the name King Abdullah the second, and he's in the White House. And the Lord showed me, you know, that he sold his soul. That man has sold his soul. And wow. I'm like, well, what does this really mean? So I began to pray and pray and pray. So I've done some, you know, really, it took about a week to do deep digging and research into who that man is. And it turns out he's a direct descendant of Muhammad. It turns out he's got the deeds to the Dome of the Rock. Oh, well, I knew, he, I knew he had the deed of the Dome of the Rock. I, I didn't know yeah, that he was a descendant he's a, of Muhammad. He's a direct descendant of Muhammad. That's right. Whoa. Now, how do you think the Vatican is going to build with their temple? They're not going to blow up the Dome of the Rock. The deeds have been signed over already. When he 
yes. at the White House. He was being bought and paid. You see, My God is the one that reveals things in secret. God knows what's happening in the corridors of power. And God's yes. able to make these things known. King Abdullah II of Jordan. Now, listen to this. I'll finish with this. Guess where he was trained? He went first of all to the British Crown, and then he went to Jesuit with Georgetown University. <laughs> that's right. Because that, that's where he got his wife. That's, that's right. Now, Jesuit with Georgetown University, that's the real White House. Prince Charles goes there. Ron Paul goes there. They all go there. All right. Why is this? Because that is the real headquarters for the Jesuits in the United States of America. And you have Fordham, you have Markey, you have uh, Notre Dame, uh, and also Obama has a Jesuit degree from where? Notre Dame Jesuit University. I photographs in the videos where he, he had the yoke of Rome, and there was two Jesuit provincials there, giving them this de Jesuit degree. Let me just say this about the internet. All the information that I have is out there. It's not that, uh, you know, you see, the information is exactly. out there. But it, 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 it takes time to bring it all together and, you know, receive the knowledge. It takes time. But once you have that knowledge, you can flow and you can just give revelation. But, you Amen. see, it also, I remember, there was a news reporter made a quotation from Herman von Rumpy, the president of the European Union. And Herman von Rumpy said this, quote, we are all Jesuits. They're coming out in the open, and they know that people will know. They My know. gosh. That is on. I love it, though. But, you know, here's the funny thing, though, Brother Allen. <laughs> they, they do it right in the open in one way, you know. But, but the thing is, is the world is just so blind to all this. I mean, everybody goes to their church and they think, no big deal, everything's all hunky-dory. They have no idea that, that Satan has been masterminding behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, everywhere, in order to bring this, his desire to power, and that is to be in the temple of God, worshipped as if he were God. He basically wants to recreate what Yeshua, what Jesus himself had for three and a half years, he wants the exact same thing. He wants that time of glory and power. That's uh, right. I do not believe that the third temple is built for the sake of the Jewish people, not for a single moment. Oh, but the no. thing is, is they're going to fall for it. They're, this is what the Temple Institute, in my opinion, are so sucked into this by... I mean, that's just been my opinion all along. I, I mean, how do they come up with the money to do what they're doing and, and to get all these things lined up and stuff? I mean, I know that's probably hard of me to say that. I mean, I know I, I know Gershon Solomon, and I know Gershon Solomon is, is not some rich guy or anything, you know, and his desire is just to see the third temple built. But he wants it built where the Dome of the Rock is sitting, and he doesn't, you know, he, he's not willing to give in to all these different demands. But the Temple Institute, we're standing there, and what do they tell us? They said, I asked, because I, my, actually my wife asked him the question. She said, do you believe that the temple that's going to be built soon is going to be the third temple of Ezekiel? He says, no. She said, well, then when, when will it be destroyed? That threw the guy off his, <laughs> off his rocker. He's like, it's not going to be destroyed. She said, well, if it's not going to be destroyed, then when does Ezekiel's temple come into play here? She said, because clearly you can't have both. You know, and can, I, can, I add, can, I, can I add something here, Stephen? Sure. Just, just very briefly, just just throw this into the conversation. Is that well, we were talking about Freemasonry uh, quite a while ago, and uh, when you look at Freemasonry, you see Solomon's Temple is really at the heart of it. The building of Solomon's Temple, not the degrees, but the actual teachings of Masonry. It's all about Solomon's Temple. Now, I believe that the third temple will be for Orthodox Judaism. But then eventually what will happen, what, you know what you see in the CC with uh, John Paul II and Pope Benedict, when you see them standing there with the Buddhists and the Hindus and the Sikhs and the Muslims, and they're all, they're all praying to the same God, you know, they're all one. And they all have, I mean, what the Pope says in Istanbul, in the Blue Mosque, uh, Pope Benedict, that is to be correct, he said, we all have, no, get the words correct, he said, we have a common faith to our father Abraham. That's a complete denial of Jesus Christ. Right there. You see, they have point. a common faith. Yeah. So what will happen with the third temple, it, they will have the animal sacrifices and oblations, but what will happen is, what you see in the CC, they will go to the third temple, and all these religions will be united together in the third temple, and that will be such an abomination to God, in the holy place. Yes. Now, you can see that happening. 
it's going to happen. And that's prophetically where I believe we're going with this. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I, I couldn't agree more. They're definitely, but the sad thing is, is that Jewish people will think it's a godly thing to some degree. Now, I hope that yeah. they will wake up, and I know there will be some that are going to wake up, because obviously God is going to save a remnant of Israel, and and, and a remnant does not, I, I got asked a question uh, not long ago, you know, they said, Brother Steve, when Paul says, all Israel shall be saved, do you think it's all the people that are in Israel today that are called Jews? I said, no. I said, I think what he's referring to when he says all Israel is this, the because he always speaks of a remnant. I said, that is a remnant, from what I can see, all the way back through time, you know, that he's always had a remnant. So when he says all Israel shall be saved, in other words, even during the 2,000 years, there was a remnant, but their eyes were withheld. So there's still a remnant. But the thing is, is the remnant is going to recognize that this something is not right with this. Now, my question is, is when are their eyes coming open? Does it come open when the two witnesses come on the scene, which I think is correct? Um, and it's during that time that their eyes are open. Uh, or is it going to, are they going to come open at the beginning of Daniel's 70th week? I don't know the answer to that, but I think they're going to start realizing something's up when they see that this this temple is not going to be controlled, and if they do have the the priest in there, it's not going to be. Uh, it'll be it'll definitely be priests that are. Um, how would we say this? The string, they're puppets. I believe that. I'd, I'd hate to say it, brother, but I think it'd be puppets because it's not God's doing. And this is why we see Ezekiel's temple doesn't. It won't even fit on the Temple Mount in the first place. You know, if you, if you take the measurements, it doesn't fit on the Temple Mount. So therefore, what is this temple that's coming up? It's definitely not the temple for the millennium. You know, I mean, so... Yeah, I mean, listen, brother, all you have to do is go on Google and type in Netanyahu and Pope Benedict, and you will see one picture. It comes up quite quick. And you see Netanyahu shaking the hand of Pope Benedict, and he puts his thumb in the middle knuckle. That's a master mason grip. Ah. Uh. The brother Mason's. I'll yeah. tell you what. The, you know, here's, let me ask you this, because this is something I've always wondered about. I, I always heard the testimony of Mike Evans saying that God had sent him there, and he prayed for him, anointing him to be uh, prime minister over Israel twice. Do you think perhaps then that these are thing, these were things that were set up to make him look uh, as if it would be a, a move of God and that would cause the, the nominal Christians to be able to follow and believe that this is the right course? Well, what do you think about men like John Hagee and his connection to Netanyahu? I mean, you know, and all the money that he gave over. I mean, what's going on? Exactly, because you're seeing that. I mean, and there's a lot of people that think think the world of John Hagee, but yet at the same token, it, it's everything seems to be a money scheme. I, I, don't, I mean, and not, yeah. and it's just a matter of time before Hagee shows his allegiance to the Vatican. You know, and he says also, he said also, and I didn't hear this directly. Uh, someone. Uh, told me on a website called Pal Talk, I was in there once, and they said that John Hagee had said that, uh, you know, Jews don't need to accept Jesus as the Messiah because they're already redeemed under God's covenant. Oh, my gosh. They still have to accept him. I mean, the only thing that I yeah. would probably teach different than what a lot of people think, you know, when they say, okay, all Jews for the last 2,000 years went to hell because they never believed in the Messiah. I said, well, then it, it seems to do away with what Jesus says when he's on the cross. And he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, it also seems uh -huh. to know the fact that Jesus says that if a man is blind, then he would have no sin. I said, you have to understand, Israel, what she did, she did for the sake of the Gentiles to begin with, and she's paying with her life. I said, then you have to ask yourself the question, what about the souls that are in the fifth seal? What about the house of Israel, uh, according to Ezekiel 37, where they say our hope is lost, you know, and yet God restores them to give them that opportunity. You know, some people say, well, no, that's, that's uh, the Jews that are there today. No, that's the house of Judah that's there today. It's not the house of Israel, you know, but does it mean that every person that died that was quote unquote Jewish was saved? No, I don't believe that. But I do believe that the ones that were trying to keep the commandments of God, but they their eyes are withheld in order for the Gentile dispensation to continue on, that yeah, just okay. just right. like in Joseph's brothers, you know, they, they, they poured the blood on the coat. They said, is this your sons or not? They meant it for evil, but God used it as a sacrifice for their sins. Otherwise, he'd, he'd been obligated to kill the nine tribes. So... Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's a lot of what we're dealing with today. But I don't agree with Hagee that uh, if this is something he said anyway, that 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 uh, all the all the Jews are just under the covenant and there's no big deal. They don't ex accept the Messiah. That's that's contrary completely. In fact, I'll tell you what is interesting. In in Matthew's gospel, when he writes about uh, until you say, "Blessed is he that," uh, and we read it normally in the King James. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. This in the in the in the Hebrew version, he actually says, "Your houses, you will leave your houses desolate." Until you say, blessed is our Yeshua. That's what he says. He doesn't even say in the name of the Lord. They've got to recognize that he indeed was the Messiah, Jesus himself. And, and I think the houses being desolate is twofold. One, they wouldn't receive the Holy Ghost because they go into exile. They rejected the Holy Spirit altogether in what they did. And then secondly, that they were going to physically have to leave the house of you know leave Israel. It has nothing to do with the temple. The temple is, is more of an allegory in that regards there. But the thing is, is they've got to believe that he's the Messiah, and there's no way around it. You know that's that's just what the scripture says. So, anyway, brother Alan, I know I've kept you up all night. You got any other thoughts before before we go? You know this is a longer <laughs> video than you normally do. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think that, okay, let me say this because the conversation has been led this way, and it's exactly what I believe. I believe that the revelation of Mystery Babylon and the revelation of Israel are combined. You cannot have one without the other. Yes. You read about, you read about Israel in uh, Revelation chapter 12. You read about the destiny of Israel. You read about the 12 stars, and you read about the authority and dominion that God has given them. Now, I believe this. I believe that the Vatican has counterfeited Israel. Ever since the time of Constantine, it became the seat of the Roman Empire. Yes. Now, I understand that, 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 that God brought judgment on Israel, and they were scattered to the nations. But he always wanted a Messianic church. You know, the Jews were excluded. It was Gentile church, and that's the way it's always been. But obviously, you know, with Israel coming back to the land, there's a many, many Jews that are becoming Christians. I mean, I've got Messianic friends. I know Messianic pastors. And... Uh, you know, their knowledge in Israel. I mean, your knowledge in Israel uh, will be way beyond mine. Just like my revelation of the Jesuit Vatican will be way beyond yours because yes. we have a different anointing. We have a different field that we, we move into and a different function, a different anointing, a different ministry. And when you they come together, that's when you have just so, just manifold revelations flowing. Amen. You have so much coming out and pouring out. And then people, it just overwhelms people because, of, because there's two anointings coming together. That's what's happening in this video. You have the anointing that God's put on your life, the anointing that God's put on my life. You know, it's not religious. It's supernatural. It's that's God right. who gives. It's God who gives revelation. It's God who gives inspiration. And that's what people need today. They need, you know, men of God who will rise up and who will be fearless and who will speak the truth as God puts it in our heart. Amen. The Bible says the fear of man brings a snare. Yes. And there's too many Christians that are just too afraid. And they, I mean, man, they can't even preach the gospel on the internet because they don't want to offend anyone. You know? There is a real heaven, there's a real hell. And I'll tell you right now, there's a real Lord Jesus Christ in glory. There's a man in the glory. Amen. And he's seated in the Father's right hand. And he's coming with the very armies of heaven. And I'll tell you what, he will strike terror from the day of his wrath at the kings of the earth. They will be terrified. They will be hiding in their underground bases and underground cities. Yes. But anyway, I'll end on that. Now I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise God. God bless you, Brother Alan. And I'll just close out for the video's sake as well. God bless you for watching. And uh, it's such a privilege to have Brother Alan with us here. And I can't thank him enough for his time. Uh, a lot of times Brother Alan does a video. It's about 10 minutes on his channel here. But we've got probably about 40 minutes here. So <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget, uh, check out Brother Alan's channel. Uh, prophetic revelation on youtube uh alan lamont uh brother alan's name and uh we'll be hooking up together and possibly even in israel so anyway god bless you guys out there shalom and have a good night one second brother alan